What's up YouTube? Welcome to a new video. In this video I'll be uh, reviewing my second semester in grad school because I have officially finished my first year and I've already done a video reviewing my first semester. Now it's time for the second semester. So once again I'll be covering the classes that I've been taking uh, and I'll give an update on the advisor hunt that I spoke about in the first video and I'll talk a bit about the teaching that I did this semester and then finally I'll briefly mention something about the qualifying exam. So let's start off with the second semester of electrodynamics. The first half of the semester was focused on things like waveguides, resonant cavities, uh, antennas, how radiation is produced, uh, which has a lot of engineering aspect to it. And then towards the end of the semester, we started covering things like special relativity and how to combine special relativity with electrodynamics, uh, which to me was the fun stuff. So it was a lot of new material that you basically don't see anywhere in undergrad and to me that gave me an appreciation of what electrodynamics uh, can achieve uh, once you actually put it into application. So the next class is Cosmology 1 and that class focused on the early universe, basically everything before the cosmic microwave background which is about 380,000 years after the Big Bang. Uh, we talked about inflation. Uh, which is the period of rapid expansion right after the Big Bang, uh, or according to some, it's the thing that preceded the Big Bang that we know of. Uh, and then we talked about how the nuclei formed in Big Bang nucleosynthesis. We talked about how baryons formed in the baryogenesis. We talked about the different epochs that the universe went through. So it was first radiation dominated, then it became matter dominated, and right now we're transitioning into a dark energy dominated universe. We also talked about dark matter and the different models that exist out there. Uh, we talked a bit about dark energy and how it's driving the accelerated expansion of uh, space. And then we uh, finished off the course with the final project where each student had to present on some topic in the early universe and then dive deep into it. The third class is quantum field theory two, uh, which is a continuation of quantum field theory one that I talked about in my first video. And this class was mo mostly focused on radiative corrections to uh, Feynman diagrams. So you may have heard that if you compute stuff in quantum field theory, you get infinities coming all over the place. And you know, how, where do they come from? How do we deal with them? This is the study of radiative corrections. So for example, if you have an electron that's uh, going about, it could emit a photon and then reabsorb that photon. And if you do the computation, you end up with uh, an infinite self-energy. So you need a way to contain that, uh, try to get rid of the infinity, uh, that's called renormalization. So we were focusing on how to actually make QFT finite and how to make sense of it. You know, what does it mean when we get an infinity in the calculation? Is that an actual physical infinity or is there something deeper going on? So towards the end of the semester, we had many options available to study uh, and that's where the group projects enter, where each group focuses on one chapter in the book. Say the particle physics people who are interested in QCD, they study the non-abelian gauge theory chapter, whereas people who are interested in condensed matter physics can study things like the nonlinear sigma model or the effective action or stuff like that. That way, uh, each group that has an interest in a particular research area can go pursue that chapter instead of learning about some other field. Now I actually took a fourth class as well instead of the usual three and that is particle physics. So usually if someone is uh, interested in one research area they would take uh, say cosmology and then they would stick with that or they're interested in particle physics and they would take that course sequence. But I actually took both because I was interested in doing some particle cosmology so I wanted to keep my options open. That's why I took particle physics and cosmology in the same semester. So I took particle one and it mostly focused on the quantum field theory stuff again. Uh, basically you start from uh, the Dirac equation and then you start building up to computing scattering cross sections and you know what's the probability that electrons would turn into photons if they if you smash them together. Uh, but it was more application focused and uh, it jumped straight into the point instead of QFT which was more formal. So towards the end of the semester we covered the standard model which is our best understanding of nature at the most fundamental. Uh, it's, it speaks about the three out of four forces of nature, the 
strong force, the weak force, and electromagnetism. Uh, we also talked about the Higgs mechanism of how particles get mass, and that was probably the highlight of the semester, is learning about the standard model. So moving on to research, this semester my efforts in searching for an advisor were much greater than my first semester efforts because you have to find an advisor before the first summer after, the, after your first year. So I emailed a few professors and I spoke with them and then now I am doing particle phenomenology. Particle phenomenology is the intersection between particle theory and experiment. It's more on the theory side, but you study things that are always linked with experiment. So uh, a formal theorist would study things like string theory and they would only focus on the theory behind uh, their particular model, whereas a phenomenologist would want to connect whatever theory they're working on to an experiment. So once again, I had to teach this semester. Last semester, I taught the intro to mechanics for life sciences. This semester, I was teaching the intro to electromagnetism for engineers. So two things were changed, uh, but the overall uh, flow of labs was the same. I had to do the quizzes, come in, and then help the students for roughly two hours. Uh, but this time, the labs were easier to grade because they actually used the Jupyter Notebook and it was more computational than the life science lab. This time around, I got better shifts. So instead of having uh, two labs back to back, like last semester, I got two labs that were on different days. Uh, so that was an easier shift to deal with. Uh, but then when we had the transition online, the labs then became hard to facilitate because it's hard doing a lab online. Uh, I'll, I'll let you think about how you would actually transition from a lab to an online lab. If you have any good ideas, let me know. I mentioned that I would say something about the qualifying exam, and that is that I passed. So now I am one step closer to becoming a candidate. Uh, I passed the qualifying exam. I have a research advisor. So now I'm getting closer to becoming a candidate, which is like committing to a research group and then working almost full time on just a thesis. All right, so that's it for this video. At some point, I'll be talking about my research, uh, and I don't know how next semester will be. Uh, there's a mixture of online and in-person classes going on, and we're still not sure how labs are gonna run. So I'll update you on that in the next video when the semester starts. And until then, uh, I hope you have a great summer.